Hey, you guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tammy. This is Creative Girl Vintage. And I owe you guys an apology because I have, it's been a while since I've did a video. And, um, you know, the weather's changing. We kind of expanded our vegetable garden this year and I got completely distracted outside. But I'm back. I thrifted a few finds over the weekend and I wanted to do some DIY transformations that I thought you'd really enjoy. So I went to, it was a town-wide garage sale. I love garage sales. I really do. You can just find some of the best things. And let me show you first. This was, this was my favorite find of the day, I have to say. This entire container of vintage lace from the sweetest lady ever. And it was a dollar. And it's things like this that just make my heart stop because this stuff is so beautiful. And I just love it. And I just use every little inch of it. This little teapot, little English teapot, 50 cents. A little plaster frame or chalkware, 50 cents. This gorgeous English plate with the hanger still on it, 50 cents. And this frame here, it's like a plaster frame I've had knocking around here. I think it was one of those um, unfinished projects. And I thought, had a good idea for it, so I thought I'd finish it today. So all three of these, now I'm not going to be doing the teapot today. I'm doing sort of more of a frame kind of theme. So these are the three projects that we're going to today. I know this really isn't a frame, but I think you're going to absolutely love what I'm going to do with this. So... How about we get started and take these little garage sale finds and make something absolutely beautiful. Okay, I think this piece is a good place to start. I'm not sure what I tried to do in the past with this, but obviously it wasn't working. So today I'm gonna use, this is just a home decor chalk paint in cottage white. I had a little bottle of this. I, I like the cottage white, and this is really going to be a very cottagey, shabby chic kind of piece. And I'm just going to cover this entire piece with the chalk paint, even the back here. It had some sort of artwork at one time. It's all faded out. So I'm just going to go in here and get all the nooks and crannies and get this thing painted up let it dry and then i'll be right back isn't it amazing what a fresh coat of paint will do this looks so good this is like a heavy plaster i painted the back as well um, i love it has the original hanger in it so that is very helpful so oh and by the way this uh the cottage white chalk paint i found at hobby lobby so let's distress this a little bit i've got a low grit sandpaper and I'm just going to rub it over these edges just a little bit here. One nice thing about chalk paint is it distresses so beautifully. It covers everything. It's like a, it's like its own primer. And a couple of things you can do: you can use the sandpaper, or with chalk paint as well, you can use a damp cloth and do kind of a wet distress. And that also will remove some of that paint as well. With chalk paint, when you wet it, it kind of reactivates it a little bit. So you can knock off some of those edges. But I wanted this to have a really soft, cottagey feel. I think, I think that looks really good. I didn't want to go too crazy with it. Okay, so at this point, with chalk paint, if you guys are familiar with using it, you can use a clear wax on this, rubbing it on and buffing it off and letting it dry. Sometimes I just don't have the patience for that. So what I'm going to do today is, I love this. This is Rust-Oleum's um, Matte Clear. I'm going to give this a just a nice little even coat, let it dry. It'll be all protected, and then we're going to decorate. Okay, we are painted, sealed, and ready to go. I was at Hobby Lobby. I was inspired by this Tim Holtz wallpaper packet. Isn't that beautiful? Um, there's just so much in here, so many projects to be had that I feel it's a good value for me. It just lasts forever. I found this in there. I thought it was so pretty and so cottagey. I cut out a little square to fit right in here. 
So what we're going to do, we're going to grab the Mod Podge and just put down a little layer right here inside our frame. Most frames don't have like this background that I've got that I've got to work with here. So makes things a little bit easier, I gotta say. Just looking to make sure my hanger was on top. Be nice to just get this all the way done. I didn't put enough on there. And the hangers at the bottom, wouldn't it? Believe me, I did things like that. Okay. This wallpaper, it's truly wallpaper, and uh, it's a little thicker, so it doesn't go on quite as quick as just a thin sheet of paper would. All right, there, we've got a beautiful background. Out of my stash, I pulled out this darling little plastic bird. I'm gonna set him right there and glue him in. Just gonna be using hot glue for this. A little bit right on his back and set him down right there. This was also a Hobby Lobby find. These Prima roses. These are just so pretty. And once again, you know, a lot of times you can't get this on sale, so you've got to pay the full retail for it, but they're so worth it. These little roses, to me, they look like they're just carved out of porcelain. They're just so pretty. So what I'm going to do is just using my hot glue. I'm going to put a couple of these right on my little vintage bird. Oh, this is so, so cottage sweet. Okay. Got that. Now, I dug through my greeting card stash, my vintage greeting cards. This card had a little saying inside of it, which I just cut right out of there. And I've got plenty more to go, so I always just save my cards. And uh, this says, there's one wish in my heart today. So I thought, how pretty would that be just to add that right there? Um, yeah, I think I'll use Mod Podge for that instead of my glue gun. Sometimes you got to decide. Grab a brush here. Which way you want to go. We'll just put some glue right in the back of this and pop that in right there. And there you go. A little thrifted frame, a little vintage bird, a piece from a greeting card. Isn't that absolutely so cute? I don't know if I want to give this away, but I tell you what. I'm going to have to. So this will be going into my Etsy shop. So let's move on to the next project. Okay, here's our next little garage sale thrifted frame. And I was going to paint this, but um, I don't know. I think it looks really good the way it is. This is like a, also like a plaster. And it was really authentic and vintage-y. So I'm leaving it just like it is. And we're not going to repaint this one. What I did do is I grabbed a piece of this chipboard. And it's really heavy cardboard. Um, this wasn't the easiest thing, but I traced around with my pencil and came up with something, <laughs> a shape. And I just kept cutting it and trimming it and cutting it and trimming it until I found uh, something that I could live with here. It, it, it fits. It's not the most prettiest thing you've ever seen, but it definitely fits and gives this a back. And then I grabbed my, my Tim Holtz wallpaper packet. I found another piece of wallpaper I liked. This has kind of a little bit of a violet, um, purple color theme. So I tried to find something that would blend with that. And I thought this worked good. So my thoughts here, I, I, I laid this down in the paper, traced this out. So I got it kind of the same size. My thoughts here was to pop this in. Let me see. I know it's not perfect. There we go. Pop this in and glue it and then glue this on the back. So let's just see how this goes, okay? You know, you guys are are here with me. So if we mess it up, then, well, we'll just have to go to plan B. All right, so I'm going to lay this in. I think that hot glue should hold that. Hmm? So far, so good. Oh, another thing I liked about this frame, see, it had a uh, hanger as well. So that was really good because I don't know how I would have got a hanger on these plaster frames. Okay, so now we've got the cardboard to put in. So I'm going to 
take my gun and go around and we'll pop that in and hopefully it's gonna hold I'm gonna think of a way to finish off the back of this so it looks really nice probably cut out a nice oval and cover everything all right so there we go so that looks pretty good and I feel it's pretty sturdy too now let's get rid of that chipboard all right so here's what I thought for this one and I had a lot of different flowers so I had to make a decision and I decided on this I put this little purple little silk in there had a little check purple bow on my computer I printed this out on cardstock in a violet color forget me not I'm gonna pop that in there and this is a vintage earring here let's take that apart so we're gonna use that in there so let's see all right usually I have this stuff all taken apart but I didn't do it so let me just let's see if I can pop it there we go just cut the back off of that it's one of those screw back earrings love my vintage jewelry okay let that can go right there now this is real easy we're just gonna use the hot glue and just put it all together so that can lay right there need this bow this also came from Hobby Lobby they got a lot of these little gingham ribbons which I just love they're so sweet and springy And also good for the holidays too. So it's all the colors. They have a lot of colors. Okay, pop that in right there. Okay, and this little forget me not. I can slip right there. So I'm just gonna put some glue right here and pop it right there. Okay. And I thought that might be pretty right there on the bow. Now you can use um, like an E6000 or a Gorilla Glue for this. My hot glue is really good for metals and glass and everything. So I'm going to just hot glue that in place and it's going to be just fine. Now that went together really quick and sweet. And number two, thrifted frame. Isn't that darling? another cottage piece. All right, let's go to our third piece. Okay, I definitely saved my favorite piece for last. This is my 50 cent garage sale plate. Um, it even came with a hanger for the back, so it'll go right up on the wall. Um, I, this is such a beautiful plate, and when I started putting this together, I pictured a gorgeous piece for the dining room, and you'll see why in just a second. So remember this lace I showed you at the beginning that was in my tub for the dollar? Well, I cut out one of these circles and I have it right there for the center of the plate. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue. Now you can probably use whatever you want doing this, but this works just fine. I'm going to lay my piece of lace right in there and get glue gun finger while I'm at it. You know how sticky all that is. Maybe go back in and just secure things down a little bit. Okay. There we go. Here I have a sweet little Japan bisque doll. This was given to me by one of my friends. She's always out thrifting and she knows what I like and she sends me cute little things all the time. Thank you, Mary. So I have a little piece of old lace here. I'm going to put a skirt on her. So it's just a scrap piece of lace, nothing special, no sewing involved. Glue that right on for her skirt. One of these uh, pink Prima Roses, I couldn't resist. I love them. I'm going to add that right here on the top of her little dress. Oh, isn't she pretty? Okay, now she is going to be placed right here. Now I'm just going to make sure that my 
plate hanger in the back. Okay, if it's hanging there, I want her to be straight. So, a little hot glue all the way down. Put her right there in the center. Make sure she's straight. And this is hanging. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, if I missed anywhere, I'm just gonna try to fill it in here. And I think she's holding in there pretty well. Okay, this is a little mother of pearl cross. It was in a box of some little religious memorabilia that I found at the flea market. So I'm going to put this right by her hand here as if she's holding it. And then why I thought this would be so beautiful for your little cottage dining room is in my letters here, all these little alphabet beads, I have spelled out, bless us, O Lord. And so it's so beautiful for the dining room to remember to be thankful for our blessings. And I'm going to glue these on. This is like kind of tedious. So I'm just going to grab these beads one at a time and add them right onto this plate. Let's see. B L E. sure I have enough room there and my S's so I'm just going to continue to do this and as soon as I get them all on there I will be right back okay all the alphabet beads are glued in place and what a sweet reminder to say grace before dinner so here you go you guys here are three little thrifted projects I think they all turned out really really sweet and these are available this week in my Etsy shop. The link to my shop is below. And I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. I wanted to give a shout out to my favorite little crafters, Maddie, Chris, Aubrey, and Emmy. They watch my videos before bed uh, like a little bedtime story. So you know what? That just really, um, it just doesn't get much sweeter than that. So thank you so much for stopping by. And um, keep, keep going out there and finding those vintage finds, my friends. I mean... We can just find these little things and give them a second chance at a new beginning. And so until my next video, be well, and I'll see you soon.